What happens when passion meets unending opportunities? When a chance is provided to pursue a dream? In America, the African diaspora are marrying ambition and opportunity and creating a standard of emergence and success in various industries. These individuals are setting a precedent in their pursuits. Hi, I'm Kali Ijugu and this is The Benchmark. Hello and welcome to The Benchmark. I'm Kali Ijugu and today we have art director, curator, and artist Metaselia Yosef and we're here at Kefa Cafe in Silver Spring, Maryland. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, first, I guess I would really love to find out growing up, were you involved in the arts or did you see yourself having a penchant for um, the creative arts? As a child, no, I, I really wasn't. I, I always thought I'd be a teacher, so I studied um, early childhood education for a while before I ended up switching over to, to art history. But um, I mean, growing up, I was always surrounded by art objects, like from Ethiopia, posters, like artifacts and things like that. But it didn't occur to me until maybe my junior year of college. But in, in college, didn't you, you studied yeah, I switched over. I switched my major okay. like three years into college. I had just happened to take an African art survey class, and it just was like, whoa, you mean you can study this thing and this can be your work and your life? And So then did that s essentially push you to, after graduation, post-graduation, pursue No, arts? even then, I just, I was like, this is it. This is what I want to do. I switched over, and I haven't looked back since. So then what was your first, I guess, venture into the arts outside of the classroom? Um, I finished up my study at um, College Park and then I decided to get more into, like I wanted to become an Africanist and more specifically focus on Ethiopian art. So I decided to go to um, Addis Ababa for like three months and do like a, an external internship, like after postgraduate internship and at the Ethiop Ethiopian um, Institute of Ethiopian Studies. and. I just was there working with the artifacts, working with the museum, the galleries, and that was like my first foray into it. So are there any artists that inspire you or works that really kind of drive your passion to curate? Uh, as far as like Ethiopian or just anywhere? Well, in general. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, um, there are like a lot of artists, like European artists, of course, you know, um, Picasso, who was also influenced by African art and that whole Cubist style, um, Manet, uh, Gustav Klimt, and then when we talk about like Ethiopian artists, of course, Iskander, um, Gabor Kassos Dasta, like, you know, the, the forerunners to, you know, Ethiopian modern art, of course. So, and they're, and they're all interconnected, so. So as a curator, um, some people don't know what, what that entails or what it means. Yeah. Could you kind of give us like in, in the day of, of what, what something like that is about or what, what that entails? Yeah. So basically when you go to see an exhibition at a museum or a gallery, um, the job or the role of the curator is to basically select the artist who's going to be seen at the, the space, whatever given space, and the curator then selects the works, interprets the works, and then decides where within the space the art is going to go for maximum impact for the audience. So basically we're, we kind of facilitate the in-between between the artist and the audience. So how, you know, how that work is going to affect you and how you interact with it. So would, what would you say is the most challenging thing about being a curator? Probably getting artists to actually like follow deadlines and timelines. You know, they're very free spirited, I'm sure you know. So just to get everything in by a deadline and, and writing up proposals and the press releases and things like that. So and then on the administrative the side of it can be a little daunting. And then on the other end, what's the most rewarding aspect of it? Um, Probably the, the audience's reaction when, when you have that opening night and everybody's like, oh my gosh, that was amazing, or this was my favorite, and the feedback from the audience is really like exciting. So would it be fair to say that even if, I mean, you are an artist, but even if a curator isn't an artist per se, you are essentially creating a story through the art. Exactly. And, and essentially painting 
a, a, an image for, for people to, to see. Um, but you are also an artist. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your, your work? Um, yeah, I, just, I started when I was in school. Um, I just started taking a couple of like elective classes, wood shop, and um, I noticed that a lot of the art that I was creating, whether I had intended to or not, was kind of dealt with these issues of like identity and cultural hybridity. So yeah, I, I, I do work as an artist, mixed media um, in particular. So I haven't really shown those many works. Um, I've been invited recently by um, the Ethiopian Students Association to show for their um, next conference to show a few works. So I'm excited about that. So then, um, where do you? Wh what are the current projects that are that are going on for you right now? Um, that are in the works and that are coming. That are coming soon. So yeah, as besides that. Uh, okay, well, as an artist, I have those three works, and I have to um, contribute by March. <laughs> so that's right Tight. around the corner. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also work as a freelance um, consultant. So all my different hats that I wear as an artist, a curator, an art director. Um, I do those things th through, and I channel it through my company, which is the Muse Collective, and that's launching at the end of the month. The website's launching. Um, and as a curator right now, I'm working with um, the DC Arts Center and Adams Morgan, um, and I'm working as the curator for them for the year. So those are... Could you tell us a little bit more about the Muse Collective? Because I think it's a really exciting um, project that, that you've started. Well, basically, um, when a client will come to us, and whether it's like for a magazine or an event or an exhibition, um, they'll come to me, and then I have a team of designers and you know, like creative people, and that's the collective, and I'm essentially the muse, and we have we just kind of you know feedback ideas, and we make the event happen. So it'll happen, I guess, as we were talking a little bit before, at, by the end of the year with the apprenticeship, um, you'll be able to curate um, y for the, the gallery. Um, for the um, DCAC, yeah. But I mean, that's not my first curatorial gig, per se. Um, my last one was with the Embassy of Finland oh, wow. in 2009. So this will be the most recent curatorial assignment for me. But this, will this one be entirely your vision? And, and you're in the one in the fall, yeah. So then, with that, I, I was going to ask you what your dream, like curating experience, would be, and if, if you could kind of relay it. I guess maybe in the fall, what would what kind of art would you feature? What kind of themes would you have? Yeah, um, I'm still deciding. You know, thank goodness I have like so much time to figure it out because it is going to be my my first time on my own right. as a curator, and it's going to be you know. Um, all on me. So I'm still trying to work out what exactly it is I want to convey and like express. Um, but uh, of course the same themes that come out in my artwork which is you know cultural production and, and identity and memory and um, as an Ethiopian American these are things that are I've had to de deal with and oh, yeah. these are important to me. So. so then would you say that your Ethiopian identity plays a lot with the way that you um, create and that you envision a lot of the things that you produce. How much does your human ide identity essentially affect affect you and your works? I'd say significantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's hard to kind of separate one from the other. I would say they're they're very much intertwined. So, does it play like in the styles, or is it more of the ideas, or is it? Both, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes when I'm working in the arts conceptually, things could be like a little American with a Ethiopian twist to it. Right. But and then material-wise, it could be totally outside of the box that I haven't seen other Ethiopian artists deal with. So it just it's just a lot of different um, different themes that get intermixed. So you, when you last went to Ethiopia, you said that you were at the Art Institute. No, the Institute of Ethiopian Studies um, at Addis Ababa University. So do you see yourself? going back and, and maybe um, producing art there or curating again or doing anything in terms of production back home? Well, definitely there is a, you know, a role for me to play back home and, and definitely back and forth. Um, I do plan on writing you know, a few books as an art historian to you know, contribute to that dialogue. Um, so definitely I have to go back for my research because that's what I'm writing about. Right. And, um, 
you know, and if, if there's any way I can contribute to the arts and creative scene there, I'm, I'm more than willing. Would you say that it's burgeoning or that it, it's kind of going through a revival or do you think it's somewhat stagnant? Because I was going to ask if, if your family has always supported your pursuits in the arts because a lot of Ethiopians, when they come here, their parents want them to be engineers or doctors right. or <coughs> work in computers and the arts are sometimes frowned upon or not seen right. as something as lucrative um, to pursue. So. On, on that token, why do you think that is, and, and do you think that there, that'll change, or that there's a revival wow, there? Wow, super loaded. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 20 questions in one. Sorry. Um, <laughs> That's how I think. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, okay, going back to the beginning, um, no, it's not the most lucrative mm -hmm. uh, thing to study or pursue. Um, at least not until you've like worked very, very hard at it, and even then it may not even pay off. But um, my family was definitely supportive. They were a little confused by it, and but I think you know at this point they're like, well, you know, she's already set in her ways. Um, but I think once they realized like I would be contributing to, you know, the the dialogue, the writing, the the study, yeah. the research, the scholarship of it, then they were starting to say, oh, okay, this may be somewhat beneficial. Um, in regards to the art scene there, I would say it's going through a revival now. Um, maybe like when I was there a few years back I did notice it was somewhat stagnant in in regards to like a lot of the artists were producing very similar works like I couldn't tell one artist from the mm -hmm. other and um, I think one thing to blame or, or one influence might be the um, tourist market because mm -hmm. a, a lot of people are coming from abroad and when they come they have a very specific idea of what it means to be African Oh yeah. So they're in search of that when they go shopping, and they're like, "No, I don't. I don't want the new stuff. I want the stuff that looks like a specific thing." So if that's what sells, and as an artist, you're also starving, and you need to feed yourself. You're going to keep producing things that sell. And that's not necessarily what's going to push the arts forward. Yeah. So yeah, I think there was a little bit of stagnation there. It's coming into a revival now. You know, there's always been Ethiopians who support the arts. Mm -hmm. um, it was unfortunately it wasn't as proportionate. You always had like more foreigners maybe that were more interested, but now it's starting to balance out. So I mean, why do you think that is? Because the the irony is that Ethiopian art history is expansive. It's expansive. It's very rich. And yet, there's kind of been a, I guess a, a break from it. Like I said, because a lot of people they want their children pursuing um, more lucrative professions yeah and it to me it's always I, I guess to me I always felt maybe it was a developing world thing um, but I I would love to know what what your insight is on on why we've kind of had a break from that rich history yeah well I, unfortunately a lot of people um, consider the arts as a luxury thing and um, I don't know if it was the fact that I grew up you know born in America but for me I was I always understood it as a very necessity type of thing like necessary to understanding yourself your world your environment your place in in the world um, so yeah there are two different you know forms or like ways of thinking about art um, so I'm, I'm not sure I, I don't know yeah. I think it's 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 I may, it may be tougher for us in the diaspora um, to deal with that because you know we're kind of I guess there's this um, guilt that okay we've, we've made it out or we've been given an opportunity mm -hmm. and, and what's expected of us is to pursue careers that maybe produce more on the surface um, are better but in reality you know our culture is so much a part of who we are and our art is so much a part of who we are and in a sense we end up losing it which is why I love interacting with artists like you and curators because <coughs> it's, it's, like I said, I think it, there's a revival and, and there's a, a chance for us to kind of look back and, and bring back something that could have been lost. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would definitely say there, there was some, there may be like a, a gap um, between, you know, the early modernists like Iskander who, and um, Gabriel Kisostesta who like were living in exile abroad working on their art mm -hmm. and then you have the new generation now who is like okay well where do I fit into this right. contextually you know the art history so we'll see
All right. Okay, well, now it's time for a little commercial break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 